The U.S. government shutdown and the pending battle over raising the debt ceiling has caught the attention of world leaders now. Today, Christine Lagarde, head of the International Monetary Fund and a frequent guest on this program, weighed in to warn of a default, a default catastrophe, calling an immediate resolution, quote, mission critical. And the U.S. Treasury Secretary also has warned that any default would trigger a 2008-style economic meltdown or even worse. President Obama went on the road to Maryland warning business owners of the damaging costs of this shutdown debacle. And all of this because of the GOP's implacable resistance to Obamacare, a law that's already been enacted and that, after all, only starts to bring the United States partially in line with international health care norms. As the politicians battle it out, the American people are signing up for Obamacare in droves. Its website was inundated by millions of visitors, far more than the government had anticipated, and that site was plagued by malfunctions from the very start. CNN's Dr. Sanjay Gupta is on a bus tour across America to diagnose Obamacare's launch. He too is in Maryland today, and I caught up with him earlier on his stop in Baltimore. Sanjay Gupta, welcome. Good to see you out there on your bus tour. What have you found regarding people and Obamacare? Uh, a few months ago, if you were to ask people how many people are likely to be interested in this, how many people will sign up, they estimated, some estimates were, that only two people in the entire state of California may actually do this. I can tell you here in Maryland, uh, just over the last seven hours, more than a thousand. So uh, there's a lot of interest here. Uh, there were some glitches in the beginning, but that seems to be getting sorted out. So, Sanjay, can we sort of sum up by saying, would this be accurate, that despite uh, the incredible ferocious resistance and controversy Obama care inspires amongst the politicians, the people who need it are actually going up to sign up for it? I think that that's very fair. And, uh, you know, when people, the people who need it are this, this 40 to 50 million people who are uninsured, about 15 to 17 percent of the population. They are the people who need it. And, Christian, you've probably heard these polling numbers. They, they poll the country and they say, what percentage of people think they will benefit from it? The number that comes back, 17 percent. It actually fits perfectly with the number of people who are uninsured, have not been able to get insurance for some time. So, yes, uh, those people seem to, to need it and seem to be able to find it, or at least starting to find it. And now what is the shutdown having in terms of an effect on people, in health effects or whatever? Simple things like flu shots. Uh, the CDC had to stop the distribution of flu shots. Maybe people think that's a big deal, maybe they think it's not. It's kind of a big deal. I mean, 35,000 people a year die of the flu in the United States. Uh, food inspections. This is another big one. Yeah, you have these food outbreaks. We make a lot of uh, news about them when they occur because uh, 6,000 people died of a foodborne illness. Many thousands get ill every year. Food inspections in many places have come to a halt. Potentially a, a big deal. And I talked to Tom Frieden, Dr. Tom Frieden, who's head of the Centers for Disease Control, and even the idea of investigating potential infectious disease outbreaks to make sure they don't become bigger, more rampant, more widespread, he's had to, he's had to sh not shut that down, but really uh, tailor that back significantly. And these are things that could have a significant impact on the health of Americans. It really is terrifying. And of course, I saw the CDC tweets uh, regarding no flu shots. And, and that does obviously affect, as you said, so many people. If it carries on for a couple of weeks or more, what kind of impact can you foresee? Well, you know, I, if you look at hospitals, for example, especially hospitals that are dependent on federal funds, oftentimes, and people don't always realize that, this, these, some of these same hospitals, these big academic hospitals that do get money from the federal government, are often the hospitals that do research, train residents for the future, and take care of the sickest patients. Research, training the future, and taking care of the sickest patients. And oftentimes, they are, they are somewhat dependent, if not entirely dependent, on these federal dollars. I've talked to some of my colleagues in those, those academic hospitals. The pinch hasn't been felt yet, in large part because there is redundancy that's built into these systems, reserve, if you will, in terms of dollars. But again, if this, if this carries on, uh, eventually that money's gonna run out. And these three things, these three pillars, if you will, of, of, of health care uh, are gonna be dramatically affected. So I don't know how, you, I don't know how it sustains itself you know, weeks and months down the line. It's an incredible story. Sanjay Gupta, thanks so much for really putting the human face on it and how this shutdown is affecting people's very lives. Thanks for joining me from Baltimore.